Hi everyone, good afternoon. This is Gabrielle. I usually teach out of Pure Yoga Asia Square and um, I teach a lot of healing classes at the studio. Today you're joining me for a one hour yin yoga practice. Really happy to see all of you joining me right now. Um, we're just going to wait a couple more moments for uh, more people to come on board. Hi Ewan, hi Elisa, hi Rutho. Happy to see you guys. Um, in this one hour practice, uh, I'll be focusing the sequence on the liver meridian. So we'll be using this practice to nourish the energy system that supports the functionality of our liver. Our liver plays in a, an important part in our body because it helps to uh, regulate our thyroid hormones our sex hormones, our cortisol, which is our stress hormones, as well as our adrenaline. So whenever we're stressed out, and if we feel like our inner system has been thrown out of whack, we need to ensure that the chi or the energy of the liver continues to power on for us so that we can keep balance within the body. Our liver is also responsible for regulating um, emotions associated with irritability, um, with insomnia, with anxiety. And in the current climate, um, a lot of us are feeling this way. There's a lot of uncertainty. There is a lot of um, a heightened sense of secure, a heightened sense of um, being on guard. Um, for good reason, of course, but with that, that hypervigilance keeps our stress hormones in constant production. And if our liver isn't able to metabolize that for us effectively, that cortisol then swims around the inner body, affecting things like our sleep and our appetite. So the sequence today comes from uh, a really good place. I hope that. Um, we're all ready to slow down just for a little bit. Uh, we, we joined Mitzi this morning for Hatha and then we just had Asmi for Vinyasa. And just recognize that a yin style or, or slower healing, a grounding practice is actually complementary to all the yang practices that you do. It's great to move the body, but it's also wonderful to take time to slow down, to reflect, to know how we're feeling and to kind of hit the reset button so that we can feel balanced, so that we can feel at peace. If you just joined me, I see 170 of you guys. Um, namaste, my name is Gabrielle. Um, I don't expect you to have props, but if you do, grab your strap, um, grab your tennis ball, just one, and grab your flux. Um, if you don't have them, a pillow, a towel would you do just fine. Um, on top of the yin yoga postures, we're also going to add on acupressure massage for uh, liver uh, meridian point number three. So if you have a tennis ball, that could come in handy. If you don't have a tennis ball, you can also reach for a pen, okay? Just make sure you're not using the tip of the pen. We're just going to use the tip of uh, the, the pen or the tennis ball to locate the point and to spend about a minute or so just massaging so um, i'm all ready to start make sure that you have your environment prepared for the practice if the connection slows down or if i'm too soft or the music's too loud just drop us a note so that the people that are running the show can make the required adjustments let's begin everybody I invite you to come into a wide-legged variation of um, straddles, so your knees are met with distance apart. We're going to take the first uh, two minutes to limber the body. So I like you to come onto your hands. So just imagine being in all fours, but the knees are a little bit wider. I like you now to tuck your toes under, so the big toes come together. And with your arms still straight, let's send the shoulders forward. Now take a clockwise circle with your hips pushing to the right and pushing back. Inhale, pushing to the left and traveling forward. So the arms remain straight and the palms remain open and supported. You're just using the hips 
to stir. And we're using this movement to stretch out the inner thighs, to warm up the ankles, to limber the lower back in preparation for the practice that is to come. If you like, you can close your eyes. If you like, you can dangle your head so that your neck receives a little bit of a stretch as well. So breathing in as you travel forward, breathing out as you travel back. One more round. Change the direction. Keep the arms really nice and strong as you send the shoulders a little beyond the wrists. Start to feel into the sides of your body. Now as you smoothen up your breathing, take a moment to just give yourself permission to wind down from whatever you were doing just before. Take a moment to invite your awareness into the body and start to notice how you feel in the hips, in the inner legs. Just for three more rounds here. Listen to the sound of your breath. Breathe in deeply. And exhale completely. Come back to center and sit on to your heels again, the liver meridian or the energy channel that governs the function of the liver starts from the inside of the big toe. It then travels up the foot into the inner leg, from the inner leg into the inner thigh. It weaves into the region of the groin and then it moves up the intercostals to stop just right below the nipple line. So this is the area that we're working with today, okay? Now, um, in yoga we chant, and in, in the chakra theory, we have different sounds for the different energy centers, uh, but yin yoga, and the style I'm teaching it in is based on traditional Chinese medicine theory. So the liver meridian um, has a resonance that corresponds with the sound shi, also spelled as X U. They use this uh, resonance in the practice of Qigong, um, but we're going to use it today as a chant to prepare ourselves as we meditate in child's pose and to not only get the body prepared for the practice, but to also awaken the energy within us. So let's come into child's pose for three minutes, everybody. And as we're here, I'm going to invite you to join me chanting the resonance she okay so wherever you might be if you need a prop to support yourself come down low maybe block maybe towel rest your forehead on the floor and as you stay here for three minutes just listen to the sound of my voice your visual reference is not required at this moment Close your eyes, allow your body to feel and arrive in child's pose. It is a posture that a lot of us are familiar with. In the simplicity of that posture, let it help you to channel your awareness back within us. So feel the ground beneath you. Feel the liver meridian from the inside of the big toe, up the foot, inner legs, up the groin, up the belly, and together let's chant she for three times. Exhale completely. Now inhale for five counts. She travel along the meridian. She Last 
time. Inhale, don't be shy. Just let your voice, your vibration go completely. She. for another minute and a half. If you need to exhale from your mouth, go ahead and let that happen. And as the eyes are closed and the body is resting, we embrace the longer holding periods in a yin practice. The yin tissues of the body that include your ligaments that connect bone to muscle, uh, your tendons that connect bone to muscle, and your ligaments that connect bone to bone, they are a little thicker and stiffer in nature, and because of that, blood and fluid flow is a little slower in those areas. So as we look into the deeper layers of the body, don't get frustrated with the time. Don't get frustrated with the length of the holding duration. But just know that we're nourishing the body at a deeper level, at a more gradual and slower pace. Can you be okay with that? Can you let the healing happen without fighting it, without wanting more, without doing Three more breaths. And as you take your final two breaths in your child's pose, if it feels good for your body, instead of arms straight, just maybe bend your elbows to the side and have your index fingers come together. And maybe you can rest right ear on the floor for a moment here. And then switch around to rest left ear. And then coming back to center. Slowly, let us roll the spine out of child's pose. Very carefully cross up the ankles to extend the legs forward. Allow your ankles to roll in clockwise and anti-clockwise direction, and then allow your feet to place. Now when you first release out of the posture and we go into rebound, the body can have a lot of sensations, can experience a lot of sensations. And during this period, it's common for people to feel vulnerable and fragile but just understand that this period is needed for the body to unwind whatever the previous posture was doing for it. And so as we take one minute in caterpillar or your forward fold, I invite you to be in that headspace of allowing. Blocks can support you. Rest low on your forehead. And if you need to, the blocks can come underneath the knees. If the hamstrings and the lower back feel tight, grab a pillow from your living room and just be here. We're not here to strive to touch our toes or to look for a dramatic uh, stretch sensation as we do in our yang classes. But what we really want to do here is to be able to nourish the connective tissue of the body so that we can in turn create more joint space and enjoy joint mobility. So a yin practice is crucial and vital to the recovery and restoration of your body, not just your body, but also the inward journey of your emotions and just really keeping track of where you are with your thoughts and how you are today. Two more breaths.
slowly roll out of your caterpillar position and face the long edge of the mat. The next posture we're going to go into is dragonfly pose. So it's a seated variation of a wide-legged stance. We're going to take a side stretch on the right and on the left side. Okay, so if you anticipate that you might need support for your forearms, your blocks, your pillows can all come into play to support you. Now, we're all born with a different skeletal structure. So the depth of your hip sockets, the direction of which your hip sockets face, all differ from person to person. So I like you not to try to strain the body, but just to be where you can, where your sit bones are still grounded, and where you don't feel like you are collapsing back or overarching forward, just be comfortable with that neutral spine and find stability in your legs. If the legs are not straight, a pillow or a towel can go underneath the knees. Be where you can today. Listen to your inner teacher within all of you and have your body to best benefit from this practice with me. So we're gonna take a side stretch to your left side and while keeping the sit bones grounded, I'm going to come into my forearms. You can position the block however you like, far or near. And if you find the hip hiking up, you can place your hand here just to remind you to send the hip low. If you like, for three minutes, you can take the arm above the head. And if the shoulder gets high after a while, you can also bend at the elbow to allow the arm to just dangle. I'm going to rest my heavy head on my palm and in doing so, I can be a little more relaxed. So in your yin practice, you're not looking to push boundaries. You're finding your edge where your body says, okay, go and you're going to try and honor where you are with your body and together with your conscious breathing and the time that we're going to spend and invest holding this posture we're going to try and allow the nervous system to wind down a little bit so that we can stop fighting that internal war within her and we can allow the opening to organically happen. Your feet don't have to be excessively flexed or pointed. Just allow them to be where they're happy to be. The target area for this pose is your groin, the inner legs, and now you'll be working into the right side of the lower belly and the front of the intercostals. So if you feel your breath trapped in your throat, that's an indicator that you've gone too far. So you can also come up a little bit and then just see if your breath can travel um, up the meridian that we're working with. So from the inner toe, up the foot, inner leg, all the way here. Close your eyes. So the beauty about this um, practice is that there's not much going on. And so if you are able to just trust that I will lead you with my verbal cues, go ahead and just close your eyes and enjoy your time in this posture. If you have a preferred music track um, that you, you like or that can help to relax you, go ahead and play it in your own practice space. I'm here just for three more breaths. I feel a lot in my body going on on the side. So, my exhalation is channeled towards the grounding of my right hip. 
I'm trying not to fight their resistance. I'm trying to breathe into this space. One more breath. Coming back to center slowly. We may remain grounded with the legs. And then just gently twist towards your right leg. Keeping nice and tall with the spine. Breathing in for the crown of the head to reach up. Breathing out for the back of the legs to draw down. Slowly come back to center. And let's work on the other side now. You want to be conscious of not allowing that front shoulder to collapse down or not excessively turning up through the chest. You want to be able to be where you are. So in my yin practice, the classes that I teach, I always like to tell my students to enter the posture at about maybe 50 to 60% of your capacity. And if you're patient, and if your body and your mind are both willing, then your practice will take you further. And we don't have to place a target on where our body should go. Sometimes it's just really nourishing to not have to push or want and to be able to be in the moment to receive from your practice. Now the liver meridian is responsible for regulating on top of hormones. It is also responsible for regulating our biorhythms. So I'm talking about things like your menstrual cycle, your sleep cycle. So you'll notice if you're particularly stressed out or if you experience something traumatic in your life, maybe the loss of a loved one, or maybe um, you've got a deadline, or perhaps even in times of uncertainty, um, it could mess up your ability to sleep. It can also um, delay your menstrual cycle. So when we're aware of how the energy systems correlate to our organ function and how it correlates to our life, the ins and outs of our life and our bodily functions, then our practice becomes the most powerful form of medicine. And as you hold, sometimes the body gives you permission to go a little bit further. And that's what I'm going to do for my body. Close your eyes, feel your breath. Three more. Last breath. Let's slowly come back to center, lifting the torso back into neutral. <sighs> Feel that release coursing through your body. Breathe in and simply and very gently twist to the left. When we have to receive or embrace or experience changes that come about from our practice, it can sometimes ruffle us. You know, sometimes students tend to overreact Sometimes they sigh it out. Sometimes, you know, um, you can see the grimace on the face. Um, part of our meditation during our practice is being able to just watch our thoughts and our emotions come and go. The 
physical sensations come and go. Nothing is permanent. So let us let come, but let us also learn how to let go. Last breath. Come back to center. Now let's slide our hands underneath the knees, and we are all going to have to face the short edge of the mat. We're going to come into this posture called hammock for five breaths. It's also known as reverse tabletop. So with your feet planted down, hip width distance apart, roll your shoulders back and plant your palms down behind you. You can have all 10 of your fingers point in the direction of your feet. As you inhale, squeeze shoulder blades together and scoop the tailbone under. And you're just going to lift up through the hips. So arms are straight, shoulder blades, coming together to the midline. And as you keep your neck in neutral, squeeze your chin down. Power into the body, the back of the thighs, and press down through your feet. One more breath here. Slowly release back down into the floor. So that should have been really nice as a counter pose. And we're gonna move into our next pose, okay? So for our next pose, we're gonna go into this posture called deer pose. There are a few variations that you can take today. Now, some of my students like to make fun of me for using every available prop in, that's available at Pure uh, for my classes. I'm not going to deny. I see all the hearts coming in, by the way. <laughs> I'm not going to deny that I'm a lover of props. Um, I also strongly believe in not torturing yourself as you hold the posture. So go on and take that extra pillow. So facing the short edge of your mat, you're going to bring your left leg in front for deer pose. You don't have to go too far in the opening of the hips. Your right knee, the leg that's behind, can come really close to the front ankle, or you can draw it all the way back until it looks like two L shapes. So whatever decision you make for your body, just make sure that the lower back is able to lift out of the pelvis. Now with my left leg in front and my right leg behind, wherever I decide to take it, I'm going to lift up through the torso and take a twist to the left, okay? So my props are ready to receive me. I'm just gonna find a really comfortable rest here and if your neck prefers to be in neutral then leaning on your left ear will be very ideal but if you want to take the twist a little bit deeper you also have the option of turning your head in the other direction for your right ear to come down onto your support I personally prefer taking the additional twist with the head. It feels really, really nice for the back of my heart. We're going to be here for another three minutes. Close your eyes, everybody. Just allow the breath to flow. We're not in a hurry. If you're not quite all the way down, you can also come a little bit higher. Come onto your forearms. So what we're feeling in the body right now is a healthy amount of stress that we're creating in the joints. An endurable, healthy amount of stress. So if you think about all the shapes that you typically take in your work day, um, it is important to limber the body. We can move our hips in six different directions, but if we are always in a seated position, then the fluids in the body that are required for repair and recovery don't get to make their way into the areas that need to be As 
we stay here for one more minute, if the body is willing, go ahead, maybe even release all of your props. And if it feels good, lie down all the way. Very slowly, with your forearms on the floor, lift the torso up, unwind your upper body. Lie down for one minute. Enjoy Shabbat. Notice if any of your muscles are involuntarily engaged as you lie here in dead man's posture. Shavasana requires no effort. But yet, chronically or habitually, some of us put effort into Shavasana. The furrowing of the eyebrows, the tensing of the jawline, clenching of the fists. We might not know it, but now just take this another half a minute here to just reflect. Am I perpetuating my own stress? And in the safe space of my practice, am I able to let go and just Shavasana, and this time we're going to take the right leg in front. I personally find deer poles a lot more compassionate as compared to pigeon poles or swan poles as they call it in yin. And I've got really tight hips uh, and a really tight IT band. So sometimes swan or pigeon, even in a half of practice, can be very, very challenging for me. And so I invite you to always tune into how you feel in the body. If you feel extremely vulnerable or if there's a nervy kind of sensation, um, a pinching kind of pain, opt out of the posture, or as I said before, bring the top knee a little closer in. Okay. So deer poles can also be taken with both knees stacked on top of one another. The choice is yours as your practice. So this way, or this way. Feel your breath flowing in and out of the body. Feel the rejuvenation.
happening in the lower back with the twist. As our practice helps us to relieve the liver energy system of any stagnation, we're inviting a state of balance back into the body. Now, I talked about cortisol, the stress hormone. Um, and if, we're, if we're constantly stressed out, it builds up in the body. The liver is the organ that's responsible for metabolizing cortisol, which means that if it senses an imbalance, an excess of cortisol, um, it is meant to transform it and to let it out of the body. So if we don't look after our liver system or energy system, then the body is not equipped to do that. And so the stress builds up and we start to fall sick and the ripple effect, the ripple effect goes on. So this time that you're investing into returning into your body has more than so many benefits that you can already feel. Some of them step in at a later stage. And so now you know. So you release out of your gear pose and twist and lie down. Take one minute in Shavasana. Close your eyes. Relax your breath and relax your muscles completely. your knees in towards the chest and roll into your side to find your way back up into sitting. Now I said at the start of the practice that I'll be including acupressure um, for the session today. So we're just going to massage one point along the liver meridian channel. The point that we are focusing on today is called Tai Tung. It's located in the depression in between the first and the second toe. So once the toes stop here at about a two finger spacing and in between the two bones, you'll feel it. So if you don't have a tennis ball, I mentioned before that you can use a pen and that pen really is just going to help you to find that tender spot. Now this particular spot when you find it, you'll know it. <laughs> this particular spot is known for um, helping to uh, treat insomnia and to regulate your emotions like anger and irritability. And when I was studying under um, TCM Dr. Clement Ng, um, he said during his lecture that if there's an exceptional amount of tension and pain in this spot, that you're probably um, stressed out and depressed. Um, it, it's hard to hear sometimes, um, and and but the reality is that sometimes we, we we have to fight so hard to keep the household running or to 
So it just continued to be at work despite all the upheavals in our daily routine. And sometimes we don't stop to think about whether we're depressed or whether we're stressed out or excessively anxious. So you can use your pen or your tennis ball to kind of put pressure on that spot to roll over it. Okay. I'm just taking a minute here to massage the Thai tone. Um, and really, if you think about a blocked drainage, okay, the, the liver meridian channel is a drain, and if there is stagnation, there is a blockage. What we're doing now in acupressure massage is we're sending the plumber to unclog the drain, or the stagnation in this case. And once the drain is unclogged, our life force, our chi, can then flow through this liver meridian channel again to optimize the function of our liver organ. Let's swap sides. And just in case you didn't have a, uh, an idea of where it is, just align your fingers with the big toe and the second toe and where your knuckles meet with that V there you'll find the depression. And sometimes when people press down into that spot, there's this achy kind of like, kind of feeling. Separate the toes a little bit more. And if the pen or the tennis ball doesn't work for you, use your thumbs. Press down and slide out. So away from your face, not press down, slide. It's hard to admit that, you know, you might be depressed or anxious, but in reality, we are in a very difficult situation right now. You know, people are dying by the hundreds, thousands all across the world, families are separated. And if you've been rattled out of your regular routine, um, if you are very um, organized, you know, that has rattled your nervous system and the way you function, that can create stress as well. Um, I know of two people, very, very close friends of mine, who are also yoga teachers, um, who, who've had emotional meltdowns since the start of this whole thing. And we're people too, you know. We're yogis, some of us are teachers, but we're people too. And I want you to know that it's completely okay to sit with how you're feeling and to recognize and to accept and to acknowledge. So through our practice, we cultivate the skill to observe and then to acknowledge and reflect. And that's how our healing happens. Once you're done with the massage, I want you to straighten your legs and kind of just shake everything out. We're going into saddle pose. Okay, saddle pose can be sometimes a little bit challenging for people with a limited mobility in the knees and the ankles. Um, if that is the case, you can take half saddle. So I'll be holding this posture for five minutes and you can choose to do half saddle, two and a half, two and a half on each side, or you can hold the entire uh, posture for five minutes altogether. So in saddle pose, Bring your knees to you bring your knees apart and your big toes together. And if you you need a little bit of help, um, you can go ahead and sit on a blanket or a pillow. Now you can stay here. I'm going to use two blocks to support me in a lying down position so that I can also stimulate the front of my intercostals since the meridian runs all the way to here. If the blocks feel a little bit hard. You know where the pillows are in your house. Go ahead and bring them out, Fred. Lie down slowly, okay? So knees apart, big toes together. You can stay here, you can rest on your forearms to lie your rib cage down on the first block and your head down on the second. Now, some of you might feel like the lower back is excessively arched, and if that doesn't feel good for you, go ahead and 
bring the pillow underneath your hips instead. Just gonna lift the hips a little bit higher. Okay. And if height number two is too low, know that you can adjust a block. You are your most important guiding light. And if that feels good for you, go ahead and change it. When you lie down, you can take the arms to the side. You can take the arms above the head. I know of some people who like to lie all the way down flat. They're probably the Heart 26 practitioners because um, this posture is in Heart 26. And if they practice the posture regularly, it's a walk in the park for them. Well, it's not a walk in the park for me, so I'm going to take the uh, variation. I'm keeping one knee bent, and I'm going to straighten one leg out. Okay? So I'm going to lie down slowly with plenty of props. And I'm going to try and enjoy my time. If you need additional support, the leg that is not underneath the body can bend and the foot can act as um, your foundation for additional stability. But if you like to be a little more restful, go ahead and just straighten that leg. See how that feels. If this posture doesn't agree with your body altogether. Another option you can take is butterfly. So, so sit the feet together and you're going to lie back all the same. And this posture also helps to stimulate the liver meridian channel. So you'll be just fine right where you are, no matter which option you If you're doing half settle, that means you're only working with one side at the moment. In another three breaths, you're going to come on up and you're going to swap sides. But if you're doing both legs at the same time, close your eyes. I will leave you in some much needed silence for the next two and a half minutes. Learn to listen to your breath. If you're in your straddle position with your eyes still closed, notice what the acupressure massage at the high tone point has done for you. Perhaps you usually struggle with the ankles and the tops of the feet in this particular posture. How has that massage helped you to be a little more comfortable, a little more giving, a little more accepting? while you stay in this pose. Notice how you're reacting in the pelvic floor. The liver meridian also threads through the genitalia. 
And so relax through the perineum, the pelvic floor. And just notice if you're receiving more from the inner legs into the front of the belly. Can the breath flow a little as you can have your forearms ground down first way down into your sit bones and then ease your torso out of that support back bend and then slowly release the legs to lie down for one Truly let go of all the stress that we have accumulated. The breath flows into the nostril. And if you like, the exhalation can take our final posture for the practice today. So the name of this posture is called Stir Up and, and um, there are a couple of variations that you can take. Now in Hatha class, this is known as Happy Baby. Um, if you already know what version you're going to take, just lie on down. And if the hips are really tight, if you have a necktie or you know the waistband of your bathrobe lying around the house, you can also use that. So we're going to be here for about two and a half minutes and as you hold on to the strap to take your knees wide apart and to support your feet against the strap or your hands, you have the option to rest the top of your thighs on top of the block and see how this prop usage is able to keep your hips a little more heavy and the breath a little more at ease. For my personal practice, I like to thread um, the strap behind my armpit. And once I'm here, I then like to hold on to the strap where it is above my face. Pull it in towards me and behind my head. This posture can be quite intense uh, if the hips are feeling a little restricted. So if you want to try it, just make sure you're able to breathe. Notice the initial resistance, whether from a physical or a mental layer or perspective. And then just see if your breath and your meditation can come into play for you to truly honor the time that you are spending in your body. We're here for just five more breaths. 
You'll meta the variation. Can you be where your body can be? Slowly let go of your props so that you may find your final resting in Shavasana. Now I highly recommend taking a much needed and, and nourishing Shavasana. So if you like to just find your final resting pose in complete silence, feel free to turn off the audio. If you'd like to spend the next couple of minutes um, chatting with me via the live chat, type your questions below. I will try and get through as many of them as possible. So off between Shavasana or hanging out, after you hang out with me, you can still go for your Shavasana. So don't worry about losing out. I'm so happy to still see uh, more than a hundred of you guys practicing with me. Um, hi Troy, good to see you. I haven't seen you in a while, but good to see you. Um, Yvonne, um, you can view uh, the session from today on the Pure uh, Yoga IG. Uh, it will remain live for 24 hours and um, to make way for the other practices to come after 24 hours, it will disappear, but I will be uploading it onto my own um, Instagram account. Uh, my handle is gabrielle.mendoza. I see you, Denise, I, and I love you too. Thank you for joining me. Um, we like to receive all your feedback and suggestions via direct message. So you can send it um, to Pure Yoga's, uh, Pure Yoga Singapore's uh, uh, Instagram account. Keep coming back for more videos. Um, we have Sharan coming uh, at 3 o'clock for Hatha One. I'm sure you'll love the practice uh, with her. Um, hi Derek, thank you for joining me. Uh, if you have any questions about yin yoga, traditional Chinese medicine, or acupressure, keep sending all these questions through. After the session today, I will go back and review um, the, the, the recording, so I will definitely be able to see everything that you're sending through. Um, uh, thank you for spending uh, time with me. I hope you were able to wind down. Remember to never feel bad for taking time to yourself. We all need to stay peaceful. We all need to stay sane. Uh, thank you, Ditti. I'm so glad um, that you were able to join me. Um, thank you so much. Now, um, let's just all you know, come together to end the session uh, with one final chant of Om. And let's just send this vibration to all the people who are apart from their families or living with, um, with deeper concerns. Let's just send our blessings and our prayers to Jen. Everybody together inhale. Peace be to everybody. Thank you and goodbye.